This is Tim Tucker, AE6LX from WorldWideDX.com. Today we are looking at this TID Radio TD-H3 that the company sent to me to evaluate. So stay tuned while I kind of run through some of the interesting aspects of this radio and I do a little spectral purity test using a spectrum analyzer and just talk a little bit about some of the pros and cons of this thing. The first thing I want to point out is how small this little TID radio TDH3 is. I've got it next to the its bigger brother, the 10 watt TID radio TDH8. And you can see by just the size of these radios, palm of my hand, this, this thing is it's just really tiny. I mean, the, it, the whole thing literally fits in your hand, uh, which is kind of cool because you can take this thing everywhere. It's a little 5 watt radio, but it's so small and portable. It'll fit in a pocket, it'll fit in easily in a backpack or a fanny pack, whatever you carry around. There's almost no reason to not have a radio with you uh, when you have something that's this small and really very functional. The next thing to point out are the interfaces. This is the standard Kenwood style speaker mic, but you know, it's the USB-C port here. This is useful for programming the radio uh, using programs like Chirp um, or others, the, the, the software, the, the, the company releases firmware updates. They are not programmable with the USB-C. You, you need a cable that interfaces with this standard Kenwood style interface to do the firmware updates. On the bottom of the radio is another USB-C. This is for powering the battery only. Now there's pros and cons to this. This USB-C port here will not charge the battery if you plug it in. You have to plug it in here. So I suppose if you had a few of these batteries and you had an extra one you know, plugged into a, a car charger or desktop USB-C charger, laptop, whatever, uh, that would be kind of cool because you'd have batteries on standby. Uh, but it also is a little weird that there's no charge controller inside the radio if you have it plugged in here to uh, power the battery as well. But, you know, not that big of a deal. This radio also comes with Bluetooth enabled. So this Bluetooth here will allow you to program the radio using the company's OD master application uh, via your, your phone or your laptop. You can see as I turned it on here, I have programmed the radio and I customized the power up message, which is something you can do via the software. Another unique feature of this radio is that it has two push to talk buttons and they advertise this on their website. Um, the top push to talk button activates the VFOA or the top channel. The bottom push to talk activates the bottom VFO. Uh, this took me a little while to get used to, um, but you know, cause it doesn't matter which VFO you have active, the buttons on the side always activate the uh, the VFO that they're associated with. But once I got used to it, it was uh, it was fine. It's an interesting idea in a radio, one I haven't seen before. Now the radio also comes with a programmable side button here. Uh, I reprogrammed this button to activate on the long press the weather channels, which are built in. Uh, by by default, it, I forgot what it comes, uh, how that comes programmed, but whatever it was, I didn't find it very useful. I think the long press was uh, to open the squelch, as I recall. A short press turns on the flashlight, kind of standard in these radios, something like that. This radio also comes with built-in FM radio, so with the function FM. So you can, you can program the FM frequencies to whatever you want uh, or just scan up and down as well. So, so now let's talk about the frequency coverage of this radio. It's advertised as a 2 meter 440 radio and also covers the airband. So you can see here's a menu setting AM band on. You turn that on and then uh, you can go down and listen to, to air traffic. There's a couple of other menus that are not mentioned in the manual. This one here turns on the 220 band. So this is the 200 mega, megahertz frequency transmit on. 
Um, it covers the entire 200, 220 band. And you can turn on the 350 megahertz frequency transmit. And you can turn on 500 megahertz transmit. So this radio covers a very broad range of frequencies that it will transmit on. Um, now, I've done some spectrum analyzer tests on a couple of these different bands. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. But uh, this is pretty unique in a little radio like this. You know, there's some other radios uh, on the market that have uh, broad frequency coverage like this, um, but they don't come with the, the Bluetooth interface or the, or the USB-C USB -C interface. So this is, this is pretty neat. I want to talk about the 220 band for a minute here. The antenna that it comes with is the same antenna that's on the other TID radio antennas. You can see it's labeled for 144 and 435 megahertz. I put this on uh, an antenna analyzer to see if it has any hope of operating on that 220 band that the radio comes with, and it's a no-go. So if you do intend to use this radio on, on 220, you need to get an appropriate antenna for that band. Um, that aside, it, it covers pretty well all the 2 meter, 440 up to up to 500 megahertz frequencies just fine. There are a lot of YouTube videos already out there about this radio that cover every last feature. My intention here is not to, to replicate what's already out there, but kind of give you an opinion on the radio and share some of the highlights. The radio has a ton of memory channels. It can scan, like I mentioned, it already does FM broadcasts, airband, uh, 2 meter, 220, 440, up to 500 megahertz. The USB-C is cool. The programming via the Bluetooth is cool with the OD Master app that they have. Um, that's That really works quite well. The radio, the company continues to come out with firmware updates to improve things. Program uh, right here uh, via this interface. When this radio first came out, it had a bunch of bugs and some spectral purity issues. And TAD radios listened to their consumers, their customers, and really worked hard to improve it. And uh, the spectral purity is actually quite, uh, I was pleasantly surprised by it. And like I said, we'll cover that in a second. Um, but uh, there's also uh, third-party folks out there um, making firmware for this, this radio as well. Uh, so it is, it is hackable, which is, makes it kind of fun. Um, the radio is fairly rugged. I've banged it around, dropped it a few times. It is not waterproof, but uh, this is a $30 radio. For $30, I don't know how you go wrong with something this small that you can take everywhere and, and works quite well. Most of the features um, on the radio are fairly similar, work pretty much the same as the other TID radios like the TDH8. Like I said, I'm not going to cover all those, um, but it's a all around pretty easy radio to learn how to use and, and the feature set is rich. Now let's talk about the spectral purity of this radio. Um, as most people know, the spectral purity of these inexpensive radios has been an issue ever since they've come out on the market many years ago. So a few manufacturers have listened to the consumers and have tried to clean up their act. TID Radio is one of those companies. So just as a quick refresher, the FCC rules for VHF transmitters with average power less than 25 watts, so this is a 5 watt radio, they must be for at least 40 dB below the fundamental frequency and not more than 25 microwatts. So the fundamental frequency we're going to measure is somewhere on 2 meters, let's say 14652, then the, all the harmonics have to be at least 40 dB down from that, from that uh, fundamental frequency transmission and not more than 25 microwatts. So uh, to do these tests, I, I use this, this tiny SA Ultra. I'll put a link uh, in the, in the uh, comments below on where you can get this on Amazon. And I use a, a little 40 watt, or excuse me, 40 dB, 10 watt attenuator. And I take uh, the antenna off and I run it into here. Now, this is not exactly how uh, the FCC uh, has their 
or the agencies that do the testing for the FCC do their tests. But absent a clean room, you know, or a perfectly uh, RF silent room and uh, all the setup parameters uh, that they do, this is a pretty good, you know, amateur kind of test to uh, take a look at how clean the radio is. So what did I find with this radio when I ran the tests? Well, I set the frequency at 14652 on two meters and ran the scan and the, the measured results was that the, the worst harmonic, the worst spurious emission, spurious emission was negative 51 dB. That is well within the FCC specs. Now, the second part of the test is that it cannot be more than 25 microwatts. So negative 51 dB of a five watt radio is going to be, you know, somewhere between 31, you know, depending on the, the measurement, um, 31, 32, maybe slightly higher than that. I'm doing this off the top of my head, uh, microwatts. So it's a little over the allowed power um, on that part of the test, but that is very good for using expensive radios, that type of, uh, that type of measure result. And that was the worst one. All the others were well within the specs. All the other spurious harmonics were well within specs. So, um, as you can see by the graphic that I'm showing here, you can see for yourself how it measured. The results on, on 440 uh, were, were very similar. Um, so that was, uh, that was pleasant, a pleasant surprise. Um, I will say that the 220 results um, were pretty good, but they weren't great. Um, this radio really isn't intended to be used, I would say, from a harmonics perspective on 220. Um, so, you know, be advised that that's really not um, as clean as it should be. But for the most part, I was like, wow, this is, uh, this is a lot better than I've seen a lot of these uh, inexpensive HTs from a cleanliness perspective. So let's wrap this up. Uh, in general, I like this radio a lot. I, I take it almost everywhere um, because it is so small. It's got all the features you need. Um, it even has some neat little features like you can turn a Roger beep on and off. You, squelch tail you can make it sound like a motorola radio if you want um, I, I wish the scanner was a little faster all of these inexpensive radios the scan is a little slow but it's kind of a you get what you pay for type of thing but for a 30 dollars radio uh, for something that you know fits in your pocket you can take it anywhere with you i think it's uh, pretty hard to beat this little guy this has been tim tucker 86 lx from worldwidedx.com hope you enjoy